Good morning. Welcome to the post-launch news conference for Orbital ATK's fifth resupply mission to the International Space Station under NASA's commercial resupply contract. Joining us here at Kennedy Space Center are three people who will give us the latest updates on the mission. Kenneth Todd, Operations Integration Manager, International Space Station Program. Frank Colbertson, Space Systems Group President, Orbital ATK. Vern Thorpe, Program Manager for NASA Missions, United Launch Alliance. After a few opening comments, we'll take your questions. Uh, for those on the phone, if you have a question, you can press star one to be entered into the queue. First of all, uh, I'd like to extend my uh, congratulations to the uh, integrated um, ORB ATK and ULA team. Uh, clearly, uh, this team was ready to go, go do this launch tonight, and absolutely uh, flawless uh, countdown. And I think uh, for those of you that were here and saw it, I think you would agree it was an absolutely uh, spectacular launch and uh, uh, certainly uh, never get tired of seeing those. So again, my congratulations to, uh, to this entire team uh, here to my left. Um, back in Houston uh, uh, this week, we're having a, a meeting of all of the uh, program managers within the International Space Station program. And, uh, and in fact, a couple of minutes before the launch, I spoke with uh, with Kirk Shireman, and uh, he wanted to, to pass on uh, to me that all of the program managers uh, expressed their excitement over this launch tonight and the ability to, to not, just get, not just get NASA hardware, but, but get uh, some of our international partner hardware to orbit, um, a lot of it being, being the research that we're going to be doing on Space Station over the next uh, uh, 60, 90, 120 days. And so it's, uh, it's a very exciting time for the program, just coming off the CRS-4 mission to be, to be here and, and on our way with, uh, with this uh, OA-6 mission is certainly very exciting. Um, the, uh, the ISS is ready, the crew's ready, and uh, we'll be, better, be ready to go Saturday morning uh, when, we, uh, when we see you out the window. Frank. Thank you very much, Kenny, and good morning to everybody. Uh, it is certainly a good day for us. Um, uh, on behalf of all of Orbital ATK, I'd like to thank the, uh, the teammates that uh, helped make this happen. Of course, United Launch Alliance and all the first folks that made this look easy. It was a very smooth count. We all know that it takes a lot of hard work doing hard jobs to make them look easy, and, uh, and they certainly did that tonight. Um, of course, the weather cooperated too, which we were happy to see. Uh, we had great support through the whole process from uh, NASA Kennedy Space Center processing the cargo and uh, Johnson Space Center, of course, in the ISS program and also the 45th Space Wing in uh, making the range available to us and, and uh, conducting the operations tonight. So it was a great team effort. Uh, it allows us to deliver over three and a half tons of cargo to the International Space Station so that they can continue their important research. And, uh, and keep the crew on board and keep them fed and clothed and, and healthy. Um, this is a very important mission, uh, both what's happening on the station and what we're delivering. And to be able to turn around so quickly uh, with a great team supporting us, uh, it means a lot to us at the, at the company. Uh, we're looking forward to more missions in the near future, uh, but we've still got some big tasks ahead of us tonight. Uh, the team has already completed the unfurling of the solar arrays. Both of them unfurled completely and are producing power and charging the batteries. Uh, we are now managing the trajectory of the uh, uh, Cygnus, the SS Rick Husband spacecraft, so that we can rendezvous with the space station uh, early Saturday morning, uh, East Coast time. And of course, we're looking forward to that and uh, getting the Cygnus on board and opening the hatch. And maybe they'll find a few Easter eggs on board, who knows? Um, but uh, it's been a good night, and uh, we're very proud of what the team has done, and thank everybody again for their support. And uh, Vern, you and your team put us almost exactly where we needed to be, and we really appreciate that great work. Thank you. Hey, well, thanks, Frank. Um, it's great to be here after another fantastic launch. Uh, I'd like to say congratulations from ULA to NASA and Orbital ATK and the entire mission team. Uh, in just a little over 20 minutes, we went from uh, liftoff to delivering Cygnus into exactly the orbit that it wanted to be in. I think I mentioned before during the OA-4 launch, that's a faster than most pizza deliveries. Um, so we did it again tonight. Uh, this was our second successful uh, cargo mission. Uh, of course, the other one was three and a half months ago in early December. And uh, I've got a, a few numbers to share with you tonight. 
Um, many of you recall that the last time we uh, launched a Cygnus, it took us three attempts over four days because of ground winds. The, the wind was blowing really hard and it was just exceeding the allowable limits for liftoff. Uh, this time the weather cooperated beautifully. Uh, winds were only blowing six knots at the time of uh, T0. Also, for the first time that I can ever remember, uh, in one of the final uh, weather updates we got, the, uh, the launch weather officer actually gave us a 0% probability of violation. And uh, it's rare that you get 0%, so the, the weather was just beautiful tonight. Uh, we were targeting a 230-kilometer circular orbit, and we came very, very uh, close to that like we normally do. We were just a fraction of a kilometer off, which is well, well within the allowable dispersions. And uh, regarding the inclination and other orbital parameters, we, we nailed it. Um, so we got Cygnus where it wants to go. Um, as Frank said, uh, you know, it takes a, a lot of folks to make this happen. And, uh, you know, the, we're really focused on mission success at United Launch Alliance. But for sustained mission success, it really takes uh, a broader team. It takes a seamless integration between the, the launch team and our customers, you know, whether they're uh, civil missions like this or commercial missions or government missions. And we are really thankful on this mission in particular to have uh, just a fantastic uh, partnership and working relationship between all the, all the team members. Um, I'd like to offer a big thank you to the Air Force and to the FAA who provided outstanding support for this launch and they also helped uh, make it all happen. Um, I want to say thanks to all the, the families uh, that stand behind all of us and, and let us do these great things. And thanks again to all of our mission partners who've worked with us to achieve now uh, 106 consecutive successful missions uh, since ULA is formed. And of course we do each one of those missions uh, one launch at a time. Uh, thank you. We'll now take questions. For those of you in the room, you can raise your hand if you have a question, and someone with a mic will come to you. Uh, please introduce yourself and to whom your question is directed. For those on the phone, please press star 1 to be entered into the queue if you have a question. Take this gentleman here in the front, please. So can you tell me what the difference is? Oh, first of all, Brian Rue, NASA Social. Can you tell me what the difference in time is from launch to capture for a Florida launch versus a Virginia launch? There's really no difference in time uh, that relates to where we launch from. It really depends on the phasing we have with the station at the time we launch. Uh, for example, on this mission, launching today results in a Saturday morning uh, rendezvous and berthing. If we had launched tomorrow night, it also would have resulted in a Saturday morning launch and uh, rendezvous and, and berthing. And if we'd have waited one more day, we might have had a two-day delay beyond that. So it, it really varies depending on where the station is in relation to the launch site at the, at the time we launch. But it's usually anywhere between one and a half and, and three and a half days. Take over here. Uh, thanks, James. Dean Florida today. Uh, first one for, for Vern. Um, no, you, you nailed the orbit there. I saw some a few questions about the duration of the, the Centaur burn. Just wondered, was there anything um, out of the ordinary there, or um, were, did it just turn out differently than people were anticipating from what was published? So, the, well, the pre-launch predictions of exactly when the events are going to occur are based on a preliminary trajectory. Typically, it's been developed a few weeks before the launch. So it's not unusual for things to vary uh, a little bit based on the actual conditions of launch. Um, what I do know is that Centaur nailed the orbit. And uh, like every mission, we're going to go do a, a very, very detailed you know, post-flight review. We always do, uh, always have done that. Uh, to make sure that everything uh, performed properly. But from everything we've seen so far, uh, the mission was pretty nominal. Um, Frank, just wondered if you could kind of reflect on this uh, two-mission detour down to Florida that is now complete, um, not quite 18 months ago, I guess, the, the, the process began. And mm -hmm. just don't know if you expected it to go as, as smoothly as it has. Um, just. What do you think now that you've, you've reached this point and you're ready to head home to uh, Wallops? Well, this is a good example of industry working together to recover from a failure and to, to move forward in support of our uh, customers such as NASA and the International Space Station in a very expeditious and efficient way. Uh, when the accident occurred, our company leadership uh, came together basically and came up with a plan and we presented it to NASA and said, 
Uh, we have a partnership with ULA. We think we can get you back, uh, we can get back to delivering cargo very quickly. And uh, they took us up on it, and uh, with the help of, of ULA and, and a lot of hard work by the team and, and support of NASA, we were able, able to pull it off pretty quickly in just over a year, with another one uh, just three and a half months behind it. I think that shows the resiliency of American industry, our ability to, to react to unforeseen events and, uh, and get things back on track in an efficient way. It also shows that, that doing some of this on a commercial basis allows us to have the flexibility to do those kind of things and react to in a, in a, a very quick way uh, in ways the government might not be able to, to do. No offense, Kenny. Mm -hmm. but, but, um, uh, but it does al allow us to show that, that this works. And, uh, and I think we'll see that continue to happen going forward as we react to the reality of the future and, and events that, that might occur. We'll come together. And the other part of that is the fact that uh, when we had the failure, the need to continue supporting International Space Station brought a lot of industry together. We had a lot of offers of help from people and ended up working together very effectively to make sure the mission continues. I also want to say thanks to the hundreds of people that showed up at this hour for the press conference, and uh, and you know my greetings to the thousands that must be watching it on <laughs> on, on TV and online. Additional questions over here. Uh, hi, uh, Sultan Bold Media. Um, I had a couple of questions. Uh, first, what is the duration um, these sort of refreshes sustain the ISS for, and uh, two, what is the statistical probability of Easter eggs being in that payload? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll leave the second one to, to Frank uh, since they packed it, and uh, we'll, we'll let him talk about eggs. I don't but reveal <laughs> secrets like that. The crew might be watching. <laughs> Yes, but uh, if your question is, I mean, we're looking at this mission for about about 55 days. We we uh, we plan uh, uh, consumables such that uh, that we could sustain uh, without this particular vehicle. Uh, we'd always like to keep in front of in front of the arriving vehicles and not have anything there that's that's critical to our ability to to be successful on orbit in sustaining the crews and keeping the research moving forward. And uh, and so that's kind of the the timeline we always work to. Uh, but uh, we keep the vehicles long enough to, to, um, to get the cargo out, uh, load them up with trash, and, and, uh, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll let them go. So that's, uh, that's the, kind of our, our plan for, for the Cygnus vehicles. Over here. Hi, Ken Kramer, uh, Northeast Astronomy Forum and Universe today for, for Vern. Maybe you could also look ahead. We, you know, we've seen the beautiful crew access tower uh, rising over the last few months, and it's, it's shining brightly there. I wonder if you could tell us about that, the progress, when, when it's going to be done, and uh, what it all means. Okay, well, we're uh, doing that in preparation for when we start, uh, you know, human flights uh, from Complex 41. That tower should be complete and fully operational by the end of the year. And the uh, biggest thing left to do is to put the, uh, the white room and the swing arm on top. Um, and as we prepare for that, you know, we're, we're running all the, uh, the cabling and, and plumbing and things like that uh, inside the tower right now. But I, I think I want to say the November time frame, fourth quarter this year, we'll, uh, we'll wrap everything up and test it, and it should be operational by the end of the year. So well ahead of uh, when we need to use it for the first time. Well, um, you know, we always, uh, from a station perspective, we always want redundancy. I mean, uh, Frank just talked to you about, you know, the, the beauty of, of getting cargo to orbit and, and bringing together all these different uh, uh, factions to, to make things happen and make good things happen, uh, even, even out of the bad things. And, you know, that, that represents redundancy in the industry thing and when we can, when we can draw on, on those kinds of things. And, and we look at it the same way relative to getting people to orbit. So our ability to, to, to do that from here uh, is, is absolutely something we're, we're supportive of and we're excited about. And, and uh, again, that'll just give us, give us more capability from a station standpoint, more flexibility. And that's, uh, that's good for us going forward. That's going to be good for sustaining, the, sustaining the, our, our international asset. Additional questions? 
All right. Well, you can tune in on a Saturday for the capture and installation of Cygnus. And uh, that concludes our post-launch news conference for this, e for this morning.